So there is ABRSM Grade 2 C1. I did a little demonstration on the Grade 1 C piece about swing. So this is the same sort of thing, but 76 is very slow. It's a very slow tempo and it's important to keep that slow blues in mind. You know, imagine you're sat on a veranda in wherever with a guitar going, my neighbor left me, woke up this morning. It's got to be really just have a lot of proper grit and feel to this. It's very tempting to rush something like this. Now, if I've got my um, iPad with GarageBand open with a drum rhythm. So let's just see if I manage to recreate 76. Yeah, I was rushing it. I was rushing it. So really, really keep it back. Those triplets at the beginning, it's very, very easy for them to go da, 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 to sort of run away with themselves. Now, where there are no quavers, for example, in the last bar here, you can still convey that sort of essence of swing by emphasizing two and four, the backbeats. One. You can really make it sort of drive along. There's no swing quavers there, but it does make it still swing. So at the beginning, the triplet quavers, have a think about the rhythmic, sorry, the dynamic shape that you're going to apply to those, because if it's all the same, it doesn't really it's just forced a bit. You could put an emphasis on the first E, which is on the fourth beat. Because it's the back beat. One, two, three. And actually playing blues slowly is really hard because you've really got to hang back, make sure that tempo doesn't run away with itself. These. Uh, triplets at the beginning. As I said, 76 is very slow. If we just check that with the with the iPad. Notice the left hand. I emphasised the G and the E, the, the slightly wider interval there. You don't want to em overemphasise it. You don't want to make it sound really sort of laboured but it has to have that sort of, that unhurried feel. Where? Nice, a little mistake there. Now, we could, it's because I'm thinking about the next bit, honest. So, we could imagine that this is the bass drum, and that's the snare. Um, ka, dum, ka, dum, ka. So that you really dig into that, uh, into that backbeat. However, we should keep the left hand under control. So, about making rooms so just imagine there are words here as well 
Now, if I go back to just check my tempo, this is really important to do. Yeah, I'm starting to settle into 76, and you'll find that when you get the right tempo, a metronome is not gonna be a huge help here, because it's just going And it can be a bit laborious, especially if when you're starting to practice this, we might even begin at a tempo of 58 or maybe 60. Let's see what happens if I try playing this at 60. This is gonna be harder because there's a lot more room. Now, if you do practice at 60 or thereabouts, those triplet quavers, when you're happy with the sort of the technical requirements with your fingers there, actually they become easier to play because you're not in any hurry. You're not going, ah. Do, uh. Do, mm. And don't rush those beats as you go through as well. You don't want to have that sort of, that, you know, rushing through sections which seem to be easier. Well, in fact, they are technically easier than the, the triplets, but you don't want to speed it up because of that. It all has to sit. <laughs> Almost feel as if you're about to fall off your piano stool. It's that, that laid back. So, let's see if I manage to keep my 60. I reckon I was pushing it up a little bit there. It might even be 63 or 4, maybe. So, it's hard to play slower, and actually that's kind of one of the difficult bits about this, is that it is slow, but it's well worth doing because there's so much you could sort of think about putting in. I mean, obviously, the notes that are written here and the layout has to be like this in the exam. But this is sort of ripe for playing with. You know, after you've done your exam, you could think, well, oh, let's see what I can do with it. So there we go, there is Dusty Blue.